How's it going, all you minties? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the Captain Marvel by Kelly Thompson Omnibus Volume 1 from Marvel Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back, everybody. Before going any further, I do want to give David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel a huge thank you for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on May 30th or 31st, depending on where you get your books. And what we're looking at here is the direct market cover by Alex Ross. On the left-hand side is your standard edition cover by Jorge Molina. So... One thing to notice, of course, is the difference in the spines. But everything else underneath the dust jacket is the same. So let's take a closer look at this copy right here. So we here we have Alex Ross drawing Carol in her different outfits throughout her years, from Binary to Miss Marvel when she first appeared, to Miss Marvel or Warbird, I guess, during the Avengers era of Kurt Music, and then of course her Captain Marvel era. And by Kelly Thompson, Carmen Carnero, Lee Garbett, and Corey Smith. Captain Marvel logo right there. Marvel Omnibus, Captain Marvel by Kelly Thompson, Carnero, Garbett, Smith, and then Carol down there. With the Volume 1. Because I announced the Volume 2, collecting the rest of her run. Captain Marvel soars to ever uh, greater heights. And there's the ISBN down there. With the price of $100. Rated T+. Plus. And we'll talk about what they added in here in a few seconds because the solicits are all wrong. But before I do, and before I take the dust jacket off, I wanted to kind of give you a small glimpse to what it would look like on your bookshelf if you're just collecting the title Captain Marvel, not the character Carol Danvers. So this is the original Marvel. Then we go through her original appearances, the early years when she was just Miss Marvel. Then Captain Marvel when she became officially Captain Marvel by Kelly Sue DeConnick, and here's our recent run by Kelly Thompson. We're getting a volume two, and of course, between these two books is the Janice Vell era, and hopefully one day we'll get a volume two, and who knows, maybe one day we'll get a Monica Rambeau collection. Of course, most of that would be Roger Stern's run in Avengers with a miniseries here and there, so I'd probably take an Avengers by Uncle Raj over Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, Omnibus any day. I just want that collection because it's so good. All right, but let's shift the focus back to this omnibus. So we've looked at the dust jacket around. Let's look at it underneath the dust jacket so you can see what the flaps look like. Fighter, soldier, hero, pilot, captain, leader, warrior, icon. I was just reading. I wasn't making that up. And then a little bit about the creators, including Carmen Carnero, because I remember this being the first time that I thought, wow, Carmen's artwork is freaking awesome. She's great. And that's because of these pages here. Uh, this is the cover of Captain Marvel The End, which is collected in here. And the rest just has the stars pattern. So we're going to open this up, talk a little bit about what's happened beforehand. Obviously, uh, maybe some minor spoilers as to this particular era, where she finds herself. And yeah, let's go ahead and crack it open, check out the artwork, and talk about what was added in here that is still not in the solicits. All right, let's crack this open. We have some yellow end sheets right here. Captain Marvel by Kelly Thompson. And you can probably tell in the background there's some other characters. Now this right here, this little blurb or this little recap page up here, that may spoil some things that happen in Kelly Thompson's run of... Captain Marvel. So if you haven't read that and you don't want any spoilers, maybe avoid that. or Maybe maybe read that first before you read this book. Uh, written by Car Kelly Thompson. So you can probably tell that each of these little blocks are broken up by the artistic team because Kelly Thompson did write the entire thing. For example, you have Carmen Carnero doing the first five issues and then issues 8 through 11, but you have Tamra Bombilan doing the colors right there, whereas you have David Curiel doing the colors over here for the one-shot. So this isn't the first time Kelly Thompson had written the character of Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel. She actually got to write some in the uh, Captain Marvel core in the, oh, what was it, the Secret Wars tie-in. That's collected in the Kelly Thompson, or the Kelly Sue the Conic Omnibus. So we kick it off with a brand new issue number one with a cover right here by Amanda Connor. Giving you a quick little recap as to who the character of Captain Marvel is and what she's about. So... 
This collects Captain Marvel, the 2019 series, after it was relaunched, 1 through 26, Captain Marvel, the end, and also Star 1 through 5. So, they added Star 1 through 5. If y'all remember, whenever I got to announce the book, a lot of you all in the comment sections asked if there was any way Marvel could add Star 1 through 5 because that character plays a big crucial role in this particular series and in Volume 2. And I said, sure, like I normally do. And I asked and they said, yeah, we'll add it in there. So that's been added in here, all five issues of that miniseries. And you can probably tell by the credits here, Star 1 through 5, artist Javier Pina right there. So Carol is reunited with some of her friends on Earth. And as a matter of fact, this takes place a lot on Earth compared to the previous runs, especially the one by Kelly Sue DeConnick. Uh, she is asked to join the Avengers again, but Tony's asking her to go through some interview, and she's like, are you kidding me? Really? You're not even leading the Avengers, and you're asking me for an interview. But it's not the only favor that he asks of her. He asks her to watch over this young girl from the Avengers Initiative, and then later on, of course, Avengers Academy, and this is Hazmat, who's one of my favorite characters from that run, so I'm always happy to see her or any graduate of the Avengers Academy in here. And if you've not read it, that series is so underrated. Uh, there's a little bit of a twist as to why the Avengers gathered those particular characters, and this might go into it, but it's not like a big, big twist. James Rhodes shows up, so Rhodey shows up, and they start having a relationship with Carol. Uh, they go on a little lunch date, and Carol's interrupted by this character that plays a big part in this book, and this is Ripley Ryan. She's a reporter, and she wants to do an article on Captain Marvel, and all because of Tony, they get introduced. But everything gets interrupted by this guy right here, the nuclear man who summons Captain Marvel outside. And it's interesting because this is the return of another character that was previously known as something else on the pages of the Fantastic Four. So the Avengers get involved and Carol's like, I got this. And nuclear man opens up a portal where he kidnaps uh, Ripley to and takes her far away. And I mean far away. And Carol's like, I'm going to go after them. And she does. So the Avengers are like, oh, you know Carol. She'll be back in a minute. She's got this. She'll handle this. And the next shot you see, which is kind of the ending of the first issue, is her in a different outfit. Her haircut's different. You see Jessica Drew. You see this kid right here. And you see what could be hazmat. And they look like they've been living in a Mad Max type of universe. So that's what the first story arc is. She is trapped well, she's in this world fighting a revolution and helping lead this revolution amongst her friends. There's other surprising characters that show up through here. There's a big, and I have to talk about this right here. Yes, the big rematch that a lot of people have been wanting to see for years. And of course, this is an homage to the Jim Lee and Scott Williams issue 269. Remember the one with the bubble bath? Yeah, that issue. That cover where uh, Carol was fighting... Rogue, of course, she was Miss Marvel. Actually, she wasn't even Miss Marvel at the time. She was uh, binary at the time, fighting Rogue. But this is the big rematch, and you can find out why Rogue is going bad. And, of course, does she ever get out of that world? Well, yeah, I mean, she's not going to be trapped there for the entirety of the run. So it kind of reminded me a little bit of the Captain America Dimension Z story, where Rick Remender had him trapped into another world. That world has different rules, though. This isn't... It's not like a future world, it's not an alternate reality, but whatever little universe she stumbled into, time passes a little bit different there. So it's only been minutes here, whereas for her it was days. But eventually she does make it back and reunite it with friends. Uh, there's a Speaking of reunions, there's a lot of reunions in here. Minerva shows up and challenges her and is still studying things. And of course they've had a history. But there's another character that's introduced to these pages and that is the character of Star. So Star is a character that shows up through here and challenges not just Carol, but like her role on Earth, if she's really a human, if she's really here for the benefit of mankind. And they go at it, because at first you don't know if she's like some kind of hero, if she's an anti-hero. What exactly is this character of Star? Of course, we do more of a little bit of a deep dive later on in her own miniseries. Then we have the big Avengers issues here. And not the actual issues of Avengers, but uh, Avengers show up through these pages. She's got a whole new different outfit. And holy crap, this part right here, this this issue, this is the ones that are drawn by Lee Garbett. These get a little bit, uh, a little get a little bit violent. I wasn't expecting that when I was reading them in trade. Like 
there's decapitation in here and i was like what the hell so maybe that's why they have a little bit of that warning at the back that parent or team plus warning so there's a little bit of secret as to who is behind all that why they are fighting i love the fact that we finally get to see miss marvel and we finally acknowledge the fact that wolverine and carol have known each other for years they've been friends for a long time that goes all the way back to the original era the claremont era so it's really cool to see them together now it's only for one issue but i'll take it then we get an introduction of a new character through the pages of the empire crossover now what's not in this book though is the empire issue number two i wish they had even had a recap page or just maybe a couple of pages to kind of let you know what's going on but it's really not why is she holding this hammer and in order to find out why she's holding that hammer you gotta see empire number two so i was hoping that they would include that usually they do or usually there's a recap page but it's not in here for the people that are completists and want com everything in the story that part of the story is not in here you just get the empire parts of captain marvel so this is the whole uniting the kree and the scrolls against the katati because the katati are coming and destroying everything in sight to get revenge eventually carol is reunited with this lady right here and i'll probably talk more about her in volume two whenever i do an overview of that because i want people to be surprised as to who that character is and she herself has a new role dr strange plays a big part in all this too but it's good to see carol like i said more down to earth and it's what i've enjoyed mostly about kelly thompson's run because i think on my channel i've shared that i've not been the biggest fan of carol as captain marvel it's really felt like it was kind of forced and of course that could be nostalgia right my captain marvel growing up was monica rambo then she kind of unfortunately almost blinked out of existence and then we had Janice Fell, and I fell in love with Peter David's Janice Fell. I know he's not the one that created the character. Uh, that was all Ron Mars, and then eventually Fabian Niciesa kind of expanded it. But uh, it, the character grew on me, and I really enjoyed him. That was one of the series when I was coming back to comics. I was starting to collect again in 2002, so it has a special place in my heart. But when Carol became Captain Marvel, it seemed like it was just forced. Like, there was no natural progression and I get it, she had different roles, you know, in the past, like Binary, or Warbird, or Miss Marvel, or just Carol. But it wasn't until Kelly Thompson's run that I actually enjoyed the character as Captain Marvel. Oh, this is the end book, which I want to talk about, because this kind of sets up, and I love the way this is collected, by the way, this is perfect mapping. Uh, the end sets up the last story arc that's collected in here, well, before the miniseries. And... This is introducing us to the world of 2051, where Carol's still Captain Marvel. Uh, she runs into a few people, and she does something at the end that makes you think. At least for me, it made me. It really made me think. Okay, Carol deserves that role, and she's she's been a badass for a long time. And I'm glad that she's written this way now. And there, there's of course a lot of similarities to another character that needed a redemption arc at DC Comics that a lot of people will make. And I get it. I made the same connection too, uh, but. We get back to the last story arc where the only thing I didn't agree with was her talking to Rhodey. Because they developed this relationship. And then this conversation with Rhodey, I was like, what? Damn it, Carol, you know about future world. Anyway, that was the, the one thing that I was like, no way. Uh, but anyway, she goes back to that world. She revisits 2051. It is now 2052. Where she helps fight this opposing force. And one of the characters is introduced through this story arc. I think this is called The New World is this character of Ove and Ove? Ove? Sure. Uh, that character, of course, has relations to Namor and another Marvel character. But the least I say about that, the better, and you can find out for yourself how all that ends. So let's go ahead and get to the very end here with the Star miniseries. So they were adding the Star miniseries all the way in the back this has artwork by javier piña but also carmen carnero doing some of the cover art and felipe andrede doing the flashbacks of this character now star made her first appearance through the pages of captain marvel through here and you get to see the character development and i didn't talk about exactly who she is uh, but she does play an important part in here especially with the way that kelly kind of made her the antagonist at first and then your 
led to believe that, okay, maybe she has a redemption arc, because last we saw her, she was trapped in, well, the place where bad people go in the Marvel Universe, is all I will say. Then we have an, an unexpected return of the Black Order. That's right, all of them are back. Uh, you have Corvus Glaive, you have the Black Dwarf, Ebony Maw, Proxima Midnight, and Black Swan. Now, the last you saw them were in the pages of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and they do explain, or Kelly Thompson does explain exactly how they get out of that. But they are here. Now are Carol and Star going to set aside their differences to team up against this Black Order? Well, read the miniseries. All the way in the back. Oh, and before I go to the back, I do want to say that most of the covers, the variant covers, are on the opposite side of the standard edition covers. So even from like issue number one, at the end of issue number one, where I left it on that cliffhanger where she goes to this revolution world, the direct market cover is on the other side of the standard edition cover. I love that they've been doing that uh, because I don't like when they do this, the thumbnail cover. So all the way in the back, we do have some back matter. So let's see. Yeah, it kicks it off with variants by Adam Hughes right there. And then you have the Lauren Sai variant, the design variants. I love these. Anytime you throw a possible future or an alternate world in there, you get a new costume. Dude, 35 plus years reading comics. Oh my gosh, actually, it's almost been 40 years reading comics. Oh, um, I still love it. Gets me every time. I don't care how many times I've seen there. Like, the, the formula is there. Doesn't matter. Still get all giddy about it. Uh, but these are the variant covers. Connecting covers all the way in the back. Really like that Chris Bocciolo cover right there. The Heroes at Home cover. Jenny Frizen still killing it. Addie Granoff. That actually, Addie Granoff making her look more like Brie Larson. The actress that portrays her. Love that Russell Dodderman piece right there. And yeah, I wish these were oversized. Because, you know, they were putting the covers in the back. And then you even get the star variant covers back here. Alright, let's talk about this binding and the paper stock. So the book has a little over 800 pages. And it is sewn binding. There was the eye. Uh, this one here printed at the iMac printer. So two things. Number one, the paper stock they're using in this particular collection is thicker than the paper stock they've used in the past. It definitely is a different paper stock. It's glossier. It's got a... doesn't have that dirty feeling to it. I, I know most of you that have iMac printer books have talked about the dirty, like, almost like it's got dust on it. Doesn't feel like that. Uh, so, thicker paper stock, meaning that you're going to get minor bleed through. So, the bleed through isn't as noticeable. While we do have an eye, the way that the book is is bound you still get gutter loss though it's too close in there like the pages the bunches are too close to the spine and it's better um yeah it's better than it's been but sometimes and i know this is a minor gripe but i try to cover my bases and make sure i tell people exactly what they're getting sometimes you have to hold it down like this to get the word bubbles that are closer to that gutter curve so there's a little bit of that especially towards the beginning i mean it's not very much it, it's not a deal breaker I, maybe it's a deal breaker for people i don't know uh but yeah just in case like, there's a little bit of that but as you can see if you hold it down you can see the entirety of the picture right there uh where we've seen binding before even if you hold it down you can't see somebody's faces if it's split in the middle but i did want to point that out for the people that it bothers that's it that is to say is that if you're interested in purchasing this omnibus don't forget to check out our sponsors if you're in europe and you're interested in buying these books definitely check out walt's comic shop in berlin germany they have the cheapest pre-order prices flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all eu countries emails answer within 24 hours waltzcomicshop.com and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all eu countries with your first order over 40 euros that's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. 
And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking this up, if you've picked up the other Carol Danver books like The Early Years or the Kelly Sue the Conic book, or if your favorite Captain Marvel is the original Marvel or Monica Rambeau, and then of course, Janice Vell. And yeah, if you want a Captain Marvel, the original years, the Marvel era, volume two sometime. But that was the overview. Let me know if you have any questions below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. Big thank you to our patrons for making videos like this possible. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. <laughs>